I do not know who these people are, but I saw on Twitter or an X that everybody was pretty upset about their breakup and they were specifically mad at him. So this guy named Dantes broke up with his girlfriend, Lara, claiming that he wanted to play more league and focus on his gaming career. I want to talk about this. Keep in mind, they're both in their very early 20s and I do not know how long they've been dating. So if anybody has the info in chat, please let me know. But I'm going to assume it was very short since she retweeted the breakup post he put out with happy nine months, which I'm assuming means they were together for less than a year. So I'm going in this blind, but this, the conversation around the breakup is what I want to talk about because I think it's very interesting. So just to get the vibe for their relationship and a little bit of foreshadowing, look at this TikTok they put out. I'm going to mute the sound because it's copyright. It says people want a relationship like ours, but they don't know dot, dot, dot. Okay. So it's like playing. They're kissing that she gets ignored for 12 hours every day just so I can lose all my games. So he plays league. So, okay, everybody, if you know this gaming bubble, okay, it's exhausting. If you're gaming in general, you're dedicating a lot of time to it. It's like anything else that you're really putting an effort into. Keep in mind, even as a YouTuber myself, I work 12 to 15 hours a day. My partner is very used to me disappearing into my office for hours at a time, though I'm quite a needy little bitch. So I do leave my room a lot to say hi to him. And I know that everyone thinks like, oh, you do gaming, you do social media, you do online content. Like you're gonna have all the time in the world. No, you work more. You do not work less. Everybody knows like unless you're a very big content creator, even taking a day off can feel like you've fallen behind. They put out this TikTok and people were like, oh no, it's foreshadowing. It's so clear. Here it comes. Now they always say when there's a joke, there's a little bit of truth in it. So the other day he did put out a post on Twitter and I'm going to read it to you. So Dante says, Laura and I broke up. Well, I could sit here and try for hours to explain the reason why it all comes down to one simple truth. I am not ready for a relationship. From the get-go, I told her that my career would be my first priority. She always did everything she could to accommodate that fact, whether it, it be bringing me food, supporting me after a bad day, encouraging me when I was down, or being an ear that could listen to all my problems. She was, in all ways possible, everything I ever wanted. The problem is, however, that relationships are about compromise. Seeing her taking steps back in her own life and career in order to support me, while I was unwilling and unable to do the same for her, is just something that, over time took its toll on me mentally. I just came to the realization that the very foundation of what relationships are wasn't something that I was able slash willing to do. And as a result, made the decision to end things. I won't pretend that I know that I made the right choice or not. The only thing I can say is that I, I'm eternally grateful for the time and love we shared. At the end of the day, I'd rather live regretting a choice that I did make than go through life always second guessing myself. Going forward, I only ask that you show her nothing but support since she was always the one who gave her all with all with understanding me and trying to work through everything. Thank you. Then if you go through the comments, it's like you took the easy way out, fumble of the year. Okay, nine months and you decide to drop someone who loved you deeply because you value a game over something, someone else insane. Sounds like you wasted the poor girl's time. It's like, oh, okay, interesting. So I thought it was really thoughtful. I thought it was really lovely. So he honored her consent broke up, said he wasn't ready. He did want to prioritize his career over relationship. And so to me, it obviously they're not the love of each other's life, right? They're not going to do life together because when it is your person, when it is the love of your life, then you do life together no matter how difficult, but obviously they weren't going to mesh. And to be honest, they're in their very, very early 20s. Very early 20s, guys. This was just statistically not the love of their life. This wasn't their high comp compatibility partner. You know, if you're just dating and you're not quite sure and you're nine months in and you're like, I'm not ready for this. I think that was very, very lovely. Now, Tara says that seems like a very mature, honestly, but the nine months that that's a little too long to notice. I don't think so at all. Some people spend five to 10 years in a relationship before they realize they don't like the person they're with. Nine months is nothing. Nine months is you're seeing each other barely, you're not even you're dating a year. Nine months could go by in the split of an eye, but to be fair, I think it would take most people years to know this. And most people wouldn't even, even be courteous enough to break up with her. Let's be real, most people would stay in the relationship for years. So for me, nine months might be a long time for somebody in their 30s, but not somebody in their early 20s. Tara says, retraction, didn't know he was in his early 20s. Exactly, major props for somebody so young, being so honest so quick, because that is a tool people don't even learn till way later. So 
I really liked this. I thought it was really thoughtful. And this is why I always say the love of your life will not prioritize their job over you, but will not prioritize you over their job. They will find balance. When you're with a partner who's going to do life with you for real, for real, you guys will learn to balance life together. I meet so many people that compromise, give in, go against their own values, and they just feel so alone in their relationships. Or they make excuses for their partner's bad behavior because they don't want to waste time and give up on the years invested. It's Life isn't wasted time, guys. It's just an experience. I don't believe in wasted time. I just believe in experience. If you sit on your couch for 10 years and do nothing with your life, I mean, you're doing something. And if you wish you had done something else, we'll start now. And so there's something to be said about when people are viewing this relationship, and I know it's mostly young people reacting to him and saying you you gave up on the, the best girl ever. It's because most people are settling. So most people are thinking, hey, you have a girl who's doting on you. That's amazing. But that's not a partner. That's a maid. Most people are saying, oh my gosh, I can't believe you dumped this girl. She was like, the best thing, you don't know anything about this girl. You don't know if she's the best thing ever, but also this is the best thing for this girl. He did the best thing for Laura, Laura, is that her name? By breaking up with her so she could go, go to the next part of her own journey. And I think that's really, really important. I think it's easy to think, oh, they're great together. They're good people. They should be a match. This is why I say people that are looking for high compatibility partners, like the love of your life, that person, they're like, this is who I'm meant to be with. As woo-woo as that sounds, and even though there could be multiple people, that is very different than the settling mentality that I keep seeing everywhere. I saw a finance ch channel try to give advice to women to settle in relationships because of a guy who makes 60 grand a year is willing to spend it on them. That's not love. That's a different version of sex work. And if you want to be a sex worker, I'm pro sex work. But this, staying in a relationship like this, instead of realizing like he's going to prioritize his career and this needs to be okay, or he's not ready for a relationship, or even he's not into her the way that he thought, it is better to break up with her than to keep her strung along for some sort of image. It is, it is always better to believe in the consent of rejection. But so many people are used to settling just for comfort that they're willing to not listen to that voice inside of them. Listen, if he thought this was the love of his life, he wouldn't have broken up with her. The fact that it is not the love of his life is every reason to break up, no matter the reason he gives to the public or no matter the reason he thinks it is in his head. And I think that's kind of the problem is we don't really know the inner workings of the relationship, but hell, this is so much better than people I know in their 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s, staying in relationships, going in and out of them. Their partners are cheating on them. There's infidelity, there's confusion, there's no lack of communication. This is way better than any of those relationships. So I'm all about it. Breaking up with somebody is about consent. You can't force someone to be in a relationship with you. Let people break up with you. <sighs> Gabriel in the comments says, I found your channel a few days ago. So glad to get alive. Thanks for the amazing content. Hello and welcome. I really like the way he worded it, but I also think he didn't know the internet uh, explanation. But of course, the content they made was about their relationship, which is why lots of people were sad about it. Apparently, the young people really liked their relationship. You know, she's very like punk, emo, goth girl very cute like posting very sexy photos and he's like the gamer boy and together they made like this couple and this is also the issue with being an entrepreneur or running a business is you have to meet somebody that understands you're going to be working and you have to prioritize work but not over the relationship and knowing that and how to do that is very difficult toad says either way it's sad to me seeing relationships not work but if it's for the better off it's bittersweet and more important to do that yeah i think i get excited I actually get excited when I see people break up because I'm like, cool, now you can go find your actual person. I, I mean, it's always bittersweet to the person going through it, but I don't know about you, but I think my girlfriends and I have always celebrated our friends breaking up with their boyfriends because we're like, thank God, get rid of him. Or like, obviously this isn't your person. So it's kind of interesting, but I can see how it's bittersweet for the people going through it. Because it's hard. Breakups are hard. I've never not cried over a breakup. Existentialist says the massive but negative reaction is giving parasocial. I think it's, I think it's, I think it, that's what it is. I think people really thought their relationship was cute. I'm sure it was great. And they, they are being parasocial, which is fine. I get it. It's like, there are certain couples on the internet that if they broke up, I'd be like, oh, that's so sad. But also like, okay, it was meant to be. But also, it, I'm sure it's sad for them. You know, it's like a bummer, but you're also like, okay, good though, because like, it's not your person. So I agree. It's like bittersweet, but also it's kind of like a celebration. Can we have both? How about this? Can we do both? Because it's kind of good news, bad news. Now let's see how they end up playing it out online. They're already kind of making tweets at each other, but they seem kind of fine, I think. 
I haven't seen anything too – I've seen things that are a little too much. Like, they probably should be just not talk about it. But they keep going back and forth in little ways. Like, apparently he's fighting right now with somebody on the internet. And I'm not I'm not sure what that's concerning, but apparently it has something to do with Laura, maybe. It doesn't matter to me. Only thing that matters to me is that it's nice to see people move on in their own way, you know? And I think this sets a precedent for younger people to know, like, you're allowed to break up with people. I don't even care if you're married. You're allowed to break up with people. The only difference is this. If this is the love of your life, then life, it's hard, but the marriage won't be. Life is hard, but the relationship won't be. My job is a huge priority, right? I'm the breadwinner in my relationship. I love my job. And my partner had to know when he signed up to be with me that I'm going full on into this job 110%. And that means I'm doing it until I retire. I'm going to be in social media. I'm going to be on YouTube. And as long as we maintain my career, it has to be the focus because I'm the career person. Like I love having a career. And that means that there has to be an understanding of what that looks like, but I will never sacrifice my relationship for my job. And the fact that he's willing to prioritize his job over his relationship is why he's not ready for one. Now there's a mix up that gets ha that, that that happens in this conversation where people will say, well, if he doesn't prioritize his job, how will he have money? For the relationship, yes. But obviously, as a person whose father owned a business and whose father was an entrepreneur and whose father was successful in that entrepreneurship, Sundays were always days off because that's the Lord's day. You always tucked your kids into bed, except on the rare occasion you had to stay late at the office. If you wanna be a billionaire kind of status, if you wanna be a high, high, high earner, sure. But if you wanna be somebody that prioritizes family and work and has a balance, then you're gonna take a pay cut and you are gonna take a success cut and it's gonna be worth it. It's not gonna feel like a sacrifice. It's gonna feel like a joy. So many people conflate prioritizing work at the expense of your family as like the priority of the breadwinner or the provider. And I think that's the wrong way to see it. You want to have a balance. You want to make sure your family knows, you know, you're there for them and your company knows you're there for them, but you don't sacrifice either for the one. There's no reason. There's no reason when you can have a balance. You can keep shooting for the stars and prioritizing your job over family. I don't think that's the answer. But you know what I really don't think is the answer? Prioritizing somebody who isn't the love of your life over your job. That's even worse. When you give up your dream job for a person that isn't the love of your life, girl, the fear is that you're gonna choose your money over your family, which would be bad. The other fear is you're gonna choose some hoe over your dream job because you think she's the love of your life when she's just a you know, life lesson. When do we know this is the love of our life and we make a balance with our career? And how do we know this is just a life lesson and we gotta choose our job? Well, first it gets down to knowing yourself, enough to say no and enough to say I'm moving on from this. Look, if it's truly your high compatibility partner, you're gonna know dudes. Have you ever been in a room with somebody and it felt like you were in the room with yourself? Like you could breathe so naturally. I was watching a TikTok with Megan Trainer, who married the boy from Spy Kids. And they said, you know, the internet loves your relationship. What's the secret to a good relationship? And she said, communication. And I asked my partner, I was like, what's the secret to our good relationship? And he said, no secrets. And it's true, but that really just means communication. We just don't hide anything from each other because it'd be like hiding something from myself and I don't hide things from myself. But that was also a journey I had to go on. You have to live such a good life with yourself that you don't lie to yourself so you don't lie to your partners. How many people are out here being like, I'm a very good partner, but I also serial cheat on my partners. I'm a very good parent, but I don't live anywhere near my kids. I'm a very good friend, but I never call my friends. Like I'm a very good this, but I never this. Like I'm a very good worker. I never show up to my job. It's like, sir, lots of people think they're good at something. But the question is, is being good at something a moral reflection of yourself sometimes? Is he rightfully being judged morally? No. The internet wants to judge him on a moral basis of ditching family for, for a job. But this girl was not his family. This girl was a story in his life, a moment in time. And I think that's what's important too. This isn't his family. This is a girl who might've felt like family. This is a girl who a lot of things, she's probably a very nice girl. But this is not the love of your life. This is a life lesson and that's okay too. I am just as grateful for my life lessons as I am for the love of my life in so many ways because they got me here, right? So young from the internet to think like, oh, he's giving up his, the love of his life for a, a, a job, but he's, he's not. If he was, that would be weird, but he's not. And that's the part that people have to accept. He's not giving up the love of his life for a job. I think that's the hardest part for all of us to realize when we're going through a breakup. 
oh shit, like you're not the love of my life. Like I'm not the love of your life. Damn, this person that I got attached to, the smell that I know, the lips that I recognize, the eyes I love looking into, like they're not mine. They were mine for a moment but they're not really mine. Discord says, my dad worked every Monday through Friday, but he always spent time with us when he got home, had his phone off on the weekends, and as soon as he got home, he made time for us. Hey, shout out dad. Discord says, my little bro ended a long-term relationship this year because his ex got pressured by her family during a visit to move across the country and be with them. After years of different planning otherwise, she came back from the trip and told my brother they were moving after they graduated. <laughs> Refused to budge or consider anything else. Took him a minute, but he re but he's realizing his person wouldn't make these kinds of demands without asking or considering his input. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. That's what I mean. The love of your life isn't going to come home and be like, guess what? We're moving. Look, this is my dream job. And I am my partner is supportive of it. I'm still not going to make any big decisions without talking to him because we are a team. We have to make the decision as a team. Breakups is not a team negotiation. Breaking up with somebody is a singular negotiation. You do not get to violate someone's consent and force them to stay in a relationship with you. Period. It sounds like she was in need of more attention from the relationship, which is so valid. Right? I'm a very needy bitch. I get it. But also, if you can't make it work, you can't make it work. And that's also okay. I think that's what's important is meeting somebody who has the right kind of love language to balance it out. And I know love languages are a construct, but isn't it everything? Everything's a construct, guys. I really need a specific amount of attention every day and we negotiate that attention. I don't get that attention automatically if my partner isn't consenting, but most of the time we're in a pretty good place to give each other a lot of physical and loving affection. And we make a concerted effort to do it because we know that's what builds and sustains a marriage. But, and again, I think this is so important, we are also incredibly compatible. Like so compatible, it would be dumb not to be together. Versus most people are just not that compatible when they're first dating. I always dated people and we were about 65% compatible. It wasn't enough for me. So like Dante's got to work on his life and his goals. She's got to work on hers. I hope her career is incredibly successful. I hope his career is incredibly successful. But more than that, I really hope they meet those people. They're going to make their life feel so symbiotic. That their love and their jobs are going to work together. Because that is a really, it's about finding, finding that person that dances so seamlessly with you. So why's my life a mess? Please tell me Cause I'm sick of thinking Yeah, I'm sick of reaching out for the truth And living life as a fool Dun, dun, dun.